Thank you very much. Chair and members of uh, the Joint Committee, thank you again for allowing me to address you today uh, on this important subject. I know that in the past uh, you have heard uh, from numbers of speakers uh, about uh, my country, Israel, and the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. I'm here today as a private citizen of the state of Israel to share my experience and to provide the truth about what's happening in Israel from the perspective of minority. Again, my name is Yusuf Haddad. I'm an Israeli Arab. I was born in Haifa, the largest mixed city of Arabs and Jews in the country. And I was raised in Nazareth, the largest Arab city in the state of Israel. Now, this may, surpri this may surprise some of you after what you've been uh, hearing about Israel. But myself, uh, my friends, and all my community regularly interact with Israelis from all sectors. And a huge part of my childhood was actually playing football. I grew up playing football with Jews, Christians, Muslims. And let me tell you one thing. We did not see each other as any different. If I go fast forward to age 18, I actually, uh, uh, in Israel, military service or national service is mandatory for Jewish citizens. But every uh, year, thousands of Israeli Arabs volunteer, and it's a number that is increasing with time. And when I turned 18, I saw my Jewish friends go to the army, and I didn't understand why I, as an Arab, wouldn't also serve my country. After all, it is my home just as much as theirs. Even more important is that the Israeli Defense Forces does not stand for the Jewish Defense Forces, rather the Israeli Defense Forces, meaning its purpose is to protect all its citizens, including two million Arab Israelis. Just before my service was about to begin, the Maxim restaurant in Haifa, owned by Arabs and Jews, was targeted by a Palestinian terrorist who suicide bombed the restaurant, killing 21 Israelis, uh, Israelis. Arabs and Jews, and injuring 51. I learned a painful but important lesson that day. These terrorists did not care that they were killing Arabs. They targeted us because we are Israelis. Just the same as Hezbollah in Lebanon fired on Israeli Arab city in the Second Lebanon War. Just the same as how nearly half of the Israeli civilian casualties from the Second Lebanon War were Arab Israeli Muslims. Just the same as Hamas, who fired rockets on Israeli Arab towns throughout the country in May 2021, killing Arab Muslims. When we Arab Israelis join the IDF, we do it to defend our country too. When you understand this, you will see that this is not a racial conflict, but a political one, because we too, as Arabs, are targets of Palestinian terrorism. Just last week, a Palestinian terrorist murdered Israeli Arab Amir Khouri in an attack where he murdered four other Israelis. Days before that, 19-year-old Yazan Falah from the Arab Druze community was murdered in another terror attack. Yet despite that, people from outside of Israel continue to lie about the reality that we, as Israeli Arab, face. So here is the reality that you didn't hear from Amnesty International. Arab Israelis, both Muslims and Christians, make up 20% of the entire population and enjoy equal rights under the law, the same as any other Jewish citizen. In Israel's basic laws, the right of freedom to freedom of religion is protected explicitly, as is the right of equality under the law and the democratic principle of the state. We are observing the highest level of nearly every position and, in fact, are overrepresented in some industries. We are 30% of all doctors, despite the fact that we are 20% of the population, I remind you. Roughly 50% of all pharmacists in, and in the last round of new doctors, Arabs were 50%. Arab Israelis are diplomats, such as Ambassador to Azerbaijan, George Dick, news anchor, professional athletes, military leaders, singers, senior tech executives, such as Johnny Suji, the head of Apple in Israel, bankers such as Samar Hajjahia, the head of the largest bank in Israel, Bank Lomi. And yet even, and yes, even Supreme Court justice, just like Khalid Kaboub, who was just recently elected as the first Arab Muslim to serve on the Israeli Supreme Court. It is true that Israel is a Jewish state, but it is also a democratic state. And I'm a living proof that it is possible while Israel is imperfect and racism exists, it is not systematic but individual. 
everyday Arabs and Jews are standing side by side working to resolve the problems in our society. But you know what doesn't help our society? White Europeans at Amnesty International telling our sovereign nation of Arabs and Jews how to run our country. Even more appalling, Amnesty has the audacity to define me, my identity, as an Arab, labeling me as Palestinian, despite the fact that I'm an Israeli Arab. Not only that, but according to recent polls on identity by Sahriya, only 14% of the Israeli Arabs define themselves as Palestinian. It's 14% out of 2 million. Yet Amnesty International thinks they know better than us, thinks know better than us how to define us. This, is, this report is about eliciting an emotional response to smear by a country, despite the fact that definition of apartheid, according to international law, does not apply to the state of Israel in any capacity. And speaking of smearing my country, T.D. Richard Boyd Barrett stood here days ago claiming there was a double standard in condemning Russia, but not Israel. But even the Ukrainian president stated, Ukraine is Israel, not Palestine. It is Israel being targeted with thousands of rockets by a terrorist organization who want to see the entire state destroyed. The Palestinians want Israel to cease to exist, just as Russia wants Ukraine to cease to exist. This propaganda exercise is a cynical exploitation of the tragedy of Ukraine in an obsessive attempt to once again shift the conversation to bashing Israel. While Amnesty and, other fan, and others fan the flames of hatred against Israel, it is us Israelis, both Arabs and Jews, who pay the price on the crown. Amnesty report is the highest of elitism, of a modern-day colonialist mindset that says, we Europeans know better than you brown people how to manage your country. Did, you, did they expect me not to be able to think for myself? not to have my own thoughts and my own opinion to refute their ignorant misunderstanding of what's happening in Israel. So allow me, as an Arab, brown, and raised in the country of Israel, which seems to gather much attention from this body, to explain to you what Israel really stands for. Israel stands for democracy with a government that comprised of left-wing and right-wing, religious and secular, Muslims, Jewish, Christian, LGBTQ and disabled. Israel stands for the rule of law, where a Supreme Court judge in uh, an Israeli Arab, where, uh, and where our previous Arab Supreme Court judge Salim Shupran sent Jewish president and Jewish prime minister to prison, to, to prison when they committed crimes. Israel stands for freedom of expression, where members of the government can openly criticize their state, including in Arabic, in the walls of the parliament. Let me tell you that we speak Arabic in the Knesset. Israel stands for, for, free, for freedom of speech, where the press can and does openly criticize the government without fear of arrest and persecute. By the way, unlike in the West Bank and in Gaza, Israel stands for humanity, where the IDF itself launched a hospital for the sole purpose of, provide, of providing humanitarian aid and treatment for Syrian injured in Syria civil war despite the fact that Syria is an enemy country. Israel stands for providing humanitarian aid to Gaza, even when Hamas bombed their own humanitarian aid convoy, which occurred in May 2021. And it stands for forming new alliances with Arab states across the region for the benefit of both people, such as the Abraham Accords. Israel stands for accepting the partition plan when the Arabs of the region said no and launched a war. It stands for granting full citizenship to Arabs who remained, like me and my family. And it stands for taking chances and painful sacrifices for peace over and over again, even when it ends with even getting over 15,000 rockets fired at our civilians from Hamas in the Gaza Strip. It stands for Arab doctors and nurses saving the lives of Jewish patients in the hospitals, and Jewish doctors and nurses saving the lives of Arab patients. It stands for Arabs and Jews who stand side by side every day as citizens of that state. Israel, my country, stands for life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Haddad.